Good morning to you all. Difficult to say good morning in these uh, difficult days. I want to send a hug to all the bereaved uh, families. I know the loss from up close. I know that there are no words that could comfort people, but it's important for you to, that you know that your sons and daughters are my heroes until the end of times. We met them, I met them all over the place. Sometimes we cried together, sometimes we laughed together. The pain will remain, but their giving will remain forever. It is thanks to their giving that we're here at this very difficult time. On January 8th, in the afternoon, I arrived here to Sheba. In the afternoon, the severely injured. I wasn't evil. I, I wasn't even, a, a, doctors were not able to identify me. On my hand, they wrote an anonymous injured 22 years old. I, want, I wanted to carry out this press conference to thank all the doctors here, to thank Unit 669 who carried me from uh, the ground to here. To you, the nurses and doctors at Sheba, what you're doing here, the dedication for each and every injured, I have not enough words to thank you. I wanted the people of Israel to know that it has the best and most dedicated medical teams here at Sheba Hospital, but all over in other hospitals. I wanted to thank the main doctor uh, he was supposed to be here, my friend, but he has now been, but he's now been uh, taken to a an emergency operation, and I'll I will return the favor to you and to the rest of the medical team here. Another reason that I'm here is the understanding of the injured of the war. I meet them in the various wards here. Some here. Some are here in the hospital since October 7th. If, one, if there's one good thing that happened due to my injury, it is uh, the, the ability that I can visit and carry the messages of the injured. For us, people who are used to being dependent and strong, it's a challenge. The challenge of understanding that you're sick, that you're injured, to understand that things may take a long, a long while, months, until they return, and some, some of the, our physical aspects will never be returned. So from you, the public, I want you to be for those injured as you were there for me. Give them the place and the time to sound their pain. Those who ran first to the battlefield for the love of their country need you at their difficult time. Re remind them, be their safety net when they need. Their injuries are not only physical, but also mental. During the fights, we lost brothers, brothers in arms. We saw the worst evil in our enemies, and it takes time to digest everything that we saw. I have the ability to be on the stage and to speak in their, on their behalf and to ask everybody, all the civilian factors, please notice them, be open to them, receive them with an open heart and an understanding. <laughs> the operation in which I was injured was very important. I don't know what, was, what, what has already been public, so I'll be careful. And for two weeks, we've been walking around the Gaza Strip and the central Gaza Strip, detecting tunnels. The amount of tunnels and the amount of ammunition is another sign of the evilness of our enemies. On January 8th, we were supposed to destroy another major tunnel, and for reasons that are still investigated, there was an explosion, there was an accident. The tunnels, the tunnels were destroyed, but with a major price, six fighters were killed and many others injured. Two of those killed were members and friends in my team, Gabriel Blum and Akiva Yesensky, of blessed memories. Gavri was a professional fighter, a curious and strong person who always worked 
quietly and carefully. I met him in the war and fought next to him. He was loved, full of joy. Akivush. <laughs> Akiva and I know each other since we were 19. We came into this team together. We were trained together. We fought together in various operations in many wars, from protective edge to the, to the, the, the current war. How can I say goodbye to you? It's many days that I'm trying to fight how much I miss you. Hopefully I, could, I can one day tell the people of Israel about you. Strong, a very sharp, sharp shooter. Even when I became a commander, I never felt any difference between us. You, you told me every night where I was right, where I was wrong. You were a compass for me. As soon as I woke up in the emergency ward, I asked if you survived. A moment before the explosion, you told me about your degree, the engineering degree. You told me another joke about, about the field that you chose. You see, Amedi, some people are doing serious things in their lives. I will love you forever. <laughs> to the families of Gavri and Akivush, I want to say, I'm sorry that I did not stand up to my mission as a commander to bring them back home safely. This pain will go with me until the end of my life. Throughout the years, I was active in, in the committees for the, for the missing soldiers, Adar Golding, Oron Shaul, Avera Mangisto, Isham Asaif. I met with, I met with cabinet ministers, and my friends and I have always said that currently the issue of the missing and hostages are the issue of just a few families, but if the state of Israel will not take care of it, it will become a widespread issue. One day, I will talk about this, but the important message that I want to say here is that we cannot forget these hostages one more time. Agam Goldstein Almog, who was kidnapped to Gaza, came to visit me while I was here. The distrust that she has in the political and the military echelon made me think. The state of Israel was established first and foremost so that every Jewish person in the world will know that there's one place in the world that is a beacon to us where Jews are not murdered, where Jewish women are not raped, where we can be safe. To rebuild that trust, we have to bring everybody home. This is our moral responsibility. I have a long way ahead. I was severely injured. The fact that I'm standing here is no sh nothing short of a miracle. A shrapnel that came into my throat hit many vital, many vital parts of my back. I came here uh, to ask you for a few months of quiet. I understand your curiosity, and I will tell you, one day I will tell you everything that I went through from October 7th and until now. But right now, we, my family and I have to take care of the challenges ahead. My, physically I'm injured, but my spirit is strong. 